Second time in her four years as head coach that Shauna Green has earned the top honor amongst her peers in the A-10. Her starting lineup, Ariane Bradshaw at the point, the transfer out of South Carolina. Jayla Scaife is a senior out of Muncie, Indiana, has been absolutely dominant, a first-team all-conference performer. Kaja Harbison, first-team all-conference for Lisa Stone in her eighth season. The former Wisconsin head coach has done a phenomenal job at St. Louis, but has not yet gotten to the title game. And Jules, that is what's on the mind for the team in blue. And you know what she told me? She said, we're tired of being the bridesmaids. We want to be the bride. It's about time. They want to get to the finals. They can't seem to get past this particular game. And like we said in the open, they have struggled against Dayton here at UD Arena over the years. And when you face the top dog in its den, speak now or forever hold your peace. To Dayton basketball to open things up. Here's Scaife. Double teamed immediately, and the kick out to Whalen is broken up. And an early turnover. Dayton coming off a game in which it scored 33 points in the first quarter. It was on pace for 132. Incredible. I mean, when you think about that, it's they can get hot. They have the ability to do that because they can shoot from the three. St. Louis will have to counter that, wanting to play more of a slow-it-down game. Kendra Wilkin with the drive into Jordan Wilmoth. And good post defense immediately. Harbison, a three, drains that down, and St. Louis gets off on the right foot. She didn't have the greatest offensive game yesterday, so I expect to see her really come out strong today. Harbison had just 14 points in the quarterfinal victory. That over UMass yesterday. Rebound is chased down by Maya Clark. St. Louis has numbers. Wilkin running the floor, turning around and fouled by Jayla Scaife. But Wilkin getting up and down. It's a new part to her game. Yeah, but a nice start here for St. Louis. A good kick out to Harbison. And Harbison with a little fake. Knocks it down, spreads the floor. That's what you need to do is, and that's something that will get her confidence going. And what I like about Kendra Wilkin is she's not a black hole. You saw her kick it out there to the open player. And she just does so many good things. Knocks in the first free throw, a 70% shooter on the year. Wilkin's the most improved player in the Atlantic 10. And that all came from hard work in the offseason, literally running the floor with Olivia Applewhite, St. Louis's post coach. It was doing a drill on one end, running to the other end and doing a drill it was basically now or never, and she took yeah. the moment. She transformed her body and got into terrific shape. That's been the key, so she can log longer minutes. She's been great all season. She's turned into a leader. 4 nothing lead after the trip to the free throw line. Scape inside, turned away. Wilkin on the defense. Here comes Maya Clark on the transition. You know, we talk about Wilkin and Harbison, but Clark... Lisa Stone says should be the X-Factor. She's an X-Factor today, and so is Smith Traore. Those two need to score today, because when they score, they win games. That's the bottom line. They, then there's not so much pressure on Harbison and Wilkin and Kent. So it's those role players that often win games like this, Joel. It's, it's, it's the unassuming players that can sometimes come up big. It's the ninth woman on the scout who magically gets eight points. You need that. You really do. It's sometimes the difference between winning and losing. Nice like pass. Jordan Roman. She's at the bottom of the scout in terms of what you've got to worry about offensively, but fine four or five points. And that's because Scape draws the attention, and, and that's a terrific job between the two posts. Early two-point lead, though, still for St. Louis. This is the first touch for Rachel Kent coming off her 22-point performance yesterday. Wilkins able to go get that. Shot clock at 10. There's Clark. Way high off the backboard. Wilkin the rebound. And that will go to date. And the Flyers here. With a great little high-low action. Scaife with the nice court vision. And, and where's the defense? There's no defense on Wilmoth. Wilmoth with the roll. And look at that. Just complete miscommunication from the Billikens defensively. Yeah, Harbison got hung out to dry. Had to pick between a three or a layup. Stuck to the guard and left Wilmoth wide open. She can make layups, okay? <laughs> you don't want to give that up. Nine seconds to shoot. Here's Bradshaw, the South Carolina transfer, and she will go to the free throw line. 
Dayton one of its first three from the floor. And what a great job just trying to split the defense, and that's something that they need. Dayton's got some players that can go downhill, and Bradshaw is one of them. She's one of their anchors on the other end, but she's taken a big step this season. And she's also put in a lot of time. It's a tough foul for Kendra Wilkin. I thought Rachel Kent took the brunt of that physicality. But Wilkin hit with her first foul. Post goes out. So and Brooke it, Flowers is in. What's interesting is that's what Lisa Stone told us before the game is that she didn't want her players to get in foul trouble. They, they did in their previous outing against Dayton. And they want to stay in the game. They need their best players in. And, and they've got to be able to laterally move. And also not allow Dayton to establish the inside presence. That happened in their previous meeting. One of two at the line for Ariane Bradshaw. Last time these teams met here, it was a one-point game decided on a foul with one second left. Aaron Whalen went to the free throw line and won the game. When they played in St. Louis, different story. Dayton won by 12. There's nice. Harbison. How good is she? She's got a mid-range game. Better than most players in the league. That's a good harbinger of things to come. If she gets early points, she really had to work for her 14 against Massachusetts yesterday. Kind of an energizer bunny. If yeah. it comes early, it follows. It flows. Absolutely. She's their silent assassin, Lisa Stone calls her, even though I don't think she's that silent. Jayla Scaife, nothing silent about her. First team all-conference performer and a triple ties the game. And she's starting to really come on strong in this tournament, Joel. I mean, we've seen her go through injuries throughout the season with tendonitis, with all kinds of things limiting her, but she's just feeling good right now. Harbison guarded by Bradshaw, one of the best perimeter defenders in the A-10. Ran into a screen big time, and Harbison tricks the layup. Smith Traore, the rebound, throws it out of bounds, though. I like Harbison's aggressiveness from the start here. This is what you want to see from your point guard. She's looking for her shot. That sense of urgency, that aggressiveness, great pull-up game. And I always say it, it's an underrated shot because not a lot of women are, are really great with the mid-range game actually that's what Bethel Boyle was telling us the other day yesterday she was talking about her team and how they shoot so well from the mid-range that's the reason why I love the mid-range we'll see VCU coming up next you can also shoot threes and how about Kyla Whitehead who came into this tournament with three made triples on the year she has that in the last 28 hours 18 points in the quarterfinals she has been huge. Nine boards as well. Baseline drive for Clark is turned away. You know, this game is being played at St. Louis's tempo. Something to watch early. Flowers the duck in with the left hand finishes right around Julia Chandler. It's a nice move. Really nice move. You know, Dayton wants to get up and down. They want to score. And Lisa Stone said this. We know they want to score in the first six seconds. They haven't gotten looks at all on that early. Right, and that's important. They need to control the tempo because Dayton wants to run. In order to run, you've got to rebound and go. And Good that's dish. a perfect dish. Julia Chandler. Shaquilla Fowler, the backup point guard, comes in off the bench. That's almost unfair. Two of the top point guards in the league back each other up yeah. in Bradshaw and Fowler. And Shaquille Fowler, she was great in the quarterfinals. She didn't score a ton, eight points. But she played 30 minutes and had seven assists. Only two turnovers. She has the ball in her hands so often. It's a good ratio. She's guarding Harbison here. That's a phenomenal matchup and an offensive foul called on Kaja Harbison. It is a pain to have Shaquilla Fowler guarding you. Dayton, though, has the lead by three. And what a start we've got here from UD Arena. Back and forth affair. A little assist making. You're watching Racket Week presented by... Phenomenal job over the last four years. And cool for her because she was an assistant. Left to become an assistant under Joe McEwen at Northwestern for a year. And then came back to become the head coach. So all of the young ladies she recruited and then left, she was able to come back and actually coach as the head job. Right, which is great. I mean, she was under Jim Jaber for a while here. So she got used to the system and being here at Dayton. And she took over. And when we asked her about getting that honor she just said you know it's a great honor but of course she congratulated her staff and gave credit to the team and the people around her I mean it's it, this kind of award she said is more about the team and the people in our program not just about me which 
you know, kind of says a lot about her as a person anyway. But she's pretty young. It hasn't been head coach that long. She's only in her fourth year and two-time coach of the year. That's pretty good. <laughs> two-time NCAA tournament participant. She's done a great job continuing with the success here that Coach Jaber had started. And they've been really responsive to her. Jenna Giacconi with the miss three. Although Dayton maintains possession with the shot clock resetting to 20. It's an early three-point lead for the Flyers. But we talked about it in the break. The pace right now being dictated by St. Louis. Dayton wants to run. We're averaging a shot every 30 seconds. That's exactly right. And it's a half-court game. And if it's a low-scoring game, it favors St. Louis. That's what they want in this, in this action. There's a missed by Giacconi and then compounds the issue with the foul. That's the first on the senior out of the Albany area in New York. St. Louis actually told us, Kendra Wilkin, I don't know if this is pie in the sky or, or just setting the bar high, said they want to play this game under 50. Well, that's, that's favoring them, <laughs> low scoring. And uh, Dayton wants it high scoring because they certainly can score. We saw them put up almost 80 against Richmond. Shaquille Fowler, the miss. Rebound put back by Whitehead. No. Rebounded again by Chandler. Out to Waylon. Gets her seventh three of this tournament. She has been automatic. Just a huge spark plug. And you know it's not going to be as easy to get those shots off here after yesterday's performance. You know, put a giant circle on her. Highlight everything around her. Wilkin turning around. Good one-on-one -on -one defense. Chandler was left alone on an island. And the rebound for Julia Chandler. Waylon again. High hands close out by Rachel Ken. That's almost like an unforgivable sin right now. Hand down around Aaron Waylon. Yeah, oh yeah. You better have your hand up and already up by the time you're closing out. Waylon had been struggling coming into the tournament. She was one for her last 12 from three before going six of seven yesterday. Now seven for her last eight. Two to shoot. Shaquilla Fowler knows the time, but missed the iron. Did a really good job to pace herself there, just didn't draw rim. This is what we're talking about here. Whalen, nice job relocating off of the rebound. This is why offensive rebounding is very pivotal for Dayton. They can get some opportunities like that. It's the best time to get a three ball in when the defense is scrambling and they hadn't found the best shooter on the floor yet. Rachel Kent just passed that one out of bounds, but it's deflected by Dayton, so it stays with St. Louis. The only reason, too, going back to Whalen, she didn't have more threes was because she got in some foul trouble in the second half yesterday, had to sit out quite a bit. So maybe she would have had even more had she gotten more minutes in the second half. Yeah, we set off the top. The record in this tournament for threes in a game is seven. That one's off the side of the backboard for Jada Stewart. St. Louis gets it back. Stewart gets it back and gets the roll with the right hand hook. That's a nice move and not an easy shot either, but she just made it look easy. Scaife wanted to turn and fire in transition. Spun into a Stewart hand. Gets it inside, though, and Julia Chandler is able to finish. Dayton's in control. Even though St. Louis is dictating tempo, Dayton's comfortable playing that game right now. I like their inside and outside action. It's very balanced right now. Wilk into the line for two. That's the first on Julia Chandler. But the redshirt freshman from St. Louis, nice job by Stewart here with a little hook shot. And you know what's interesting about her is Lisa Stone said that she's the most skilled player that they have on their team. And, and that's saying a lot. She just has to put the will into it as she continues to grow and, and get older. But a lot of upside with her. There will be some availability because this young lady is graduating. Kendra Wilkin is the only senior that plays for St. Louis. So they're a fairly young team. What a future they have, right? Yeah, they're going to need a post presence, though. So, you know, Jada Stewart, not the biggest of players, but has the ability to go score down on the block. Wilkin is shooting right now into a ravenous Staten Flyer band. Waving foam fingers in her face as she missed that one. First time the tournament has been here. Jayla Scaife, home crowd's going to love that. Second three. Dayton looks really smooth right now. They're, they're really getting good looks and knocking down the ones they're getting. Hand up, three, missed on the move by Stewart, but an offensive rebound for the best to do it in this conference. 
Mariama Smith Traore averages better than three O boards a game. Into Wilkin. Wilmoth one on one. Good spin over the shoulder. No finish. Boy, St. Louis is getting some looks. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, you want your big in there like Wilkin to make a move like that. Just good, pretty good defense. Look at Lisa Stone playing defense on the bench for St. Louis. Hands out. Wilmoth. Beat back door. That's, that's the terrific. second time. Ter terrific two man game. I mean, that time they did it with their shooter and I like it because there's going to be a tension with your shooter in Wayland. So if you're in a two-man situation with her, you're going to probably get an open look because she draws that attention on that side. Yeah, who do you pick? St. Louis will run this down. There's about a seven-second game clock, shot clock differential. Four seconds. Stewart got to go. No. Rebounded by Wilmoth. Seven seconds. Dayton will have a chance here. Up 11. Two seconds. Whalen the heave. Got it back. Scape. Get out of here. Never quit. Jayla Scape ends the first quarter with a dagger. And what a shot. Jayla Scape just following her shot, Joel. Textbook basketball. Following your teammate's shot. That is teamwork to a T. At the end of the first quarter, Dayton plus 13. You're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Welcome back to UD Arena where the Flyers are up 23 to 10. And, and this is why Dayton is so tough in transition. Freeze it here. You see Wilkin, she's not looking at the ball and the man. You're going to see a man here crash to the glass and Scaife ends up getting the rebound. But you've got to get back. You've got to be able to see ball and man. That time just a total hiccup defensively. And why if Dayton is able to get out and run and they rebounded the ball, they got it out in transition. They ran and that's what... That's their wheelhouse. That's when they're very successful. I thought to start the game, St. Louis did a pretty good job at limiting those chances. But if they continue to bolster those chances in the run game, could be trouble. Fundamentals of transition defense, you just have to find a body. doesn't matter which body. Just find a body and make sure that everyone's accounted for. Right. And you had a lot of people scrambling there. A simple follow your shot. It gives you the momentum here going into the second quarter. St. Louis does start with possession in the second quarter. This is a game of runs. And all you have to do is go back and look at the last time these teams met in this building. St. Louis had a quarter, the third quarter, where it did not make a field goal. We that, were here for that one. That can swing the other way because Dayton yesterday made one shot in the fourth quarter. So this thing is not nearly decided. A lot of time. Absolutely. And, and we have seen Dayton not do as well in second halves. I'm curious to see how they come out in the second half to finish the game, too. Turnover for St. Louis was number three. Gives Dayton a chance to expand what is right now a game-high 13-point lead into Jordan Wilmoth. Brooke Flowers, a great defender, but gave up midline. And the posts are often key for Dayton. Shauna Green has said we can be too guard-heavy. The posts have scored a lot today, and that's a great sign. Wilmoth can go... They, you, you can go big playing with her in the game, but between her and Jayla, got a lot of size in there. But Wilmoth has struggled with a lot of injuries throughout her career, and she's starting to feel better and healthy here. And they've needed her. Flowers had the miss on the other end. Scaife, give her three more. Jayla Scaife is a senior, did not play in the NCAA tournament last year, and that will not happen again if she has her say. And she played in the USA Basketball last spring and competed against other players that are the best in the world. And that helped her a lot. She worked so hard in the offseason. And that's what Shauna Green told us 
in terms of her, just that ability to play up to, to the way that she's able to. That last miss for Rachel Kent, her first shot of the game, comes off her quarterfinal performance. Six made threes, 22 points. Dayton's done the job, taking away the freshman. Here's Scaife again for three. That one's long. And rebounded by Kent. And Maya Clark is down for St. Louis. So four on five. The officials will stop this and go attend to Clark. And hopefully she's okay. It was off the screen. We saw her go down. Number 32 here in blue. She was trying to get through the screen. And I did not think that it was a moving screen. Whitehead was pretty set there, and she tried to kind of plow through her, and it looks like she got hit. It's a good physical screen. Yeah, I mean, she was pretty set. So Lisa Stone out to take a look at Maya Clark, who you had mentioned off the top. Lisa Stone calls her an X-factor. She can be the person that elevates this St. Louis team. And down 18, somebody that they would want out on the court big time. Yeah, and we're just checking out what happened here, and she tries to battle around the screen, gets really just knocked down. I know from my own experience, it, it's hard getting around screens sometimes, and you try to go over top of them, and you get kneed in the quadricep a lot, and I remember that happening to me a lot. It was more so in my quad area because I was smaller, but depending on how you're trying to get through the screen, it can be painful. Or sometimes you don't know it's coming. You, you don't. turn and, that corner. And you kind of yell at your teammates for that. And I'm not saying yell, but they need to tell you when it's coming. Communicate. It, it did seem like that caught her a little bit off guard. And those players behind you should be telling you. But she saw the screen. I mean, it was in front of her. I think she got, it was a combination of Whitehead's arm into Clark's arm, which then got her in the upper body. Sean Good coming over as our officials take a look at whether or not there was anything malicious there. There was not. Play on. As Clark continues to be attended to, and they're looking at that arm more than anything else. Yeah, Thought that's unfortunate. Maybe at first wind taken out, but we said the arm kind of got pressed and collapsed up against her body. Yeah, not good. Hopefully she's okay. Clark is replaced by Julia Martinez, the freshman, 11 in blue. Really good distributor. Wilkin going to work underneath. There's Martinez with the rebound. Right back inside. Smith Traore. Wilkin can shoot 40% from three. She's your center, but do not dare her. That's right. She can shoot from out there and spread the floor out. It's a 15-point game. Dayton still well in control. Harbison under the screen. Fowler will shoot. And an 18-footer is good for the five-foot-two Shaquilla Fowler, the little water bug. And they often really bait Shaq to shoot. And you know what? She can make those when she gets the opportunity. She was wide open. If they're going to make her shoot those, she's got to take them. Wilkin inside. And that's an offensive foul. Shaq Diesel, by the way. You got to get the Shaq Diesel. The I'm sorry, name. I yeah. missed the Diesel part. She is <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> That is the second on Kendra Wilkin. So Lisa Stone will pull the most improved player of the year in the Atlantic 10 with seven minutes left to go and her team down 17. And St. they Louis only have 13 fast. points. They can't score. They're really struggling to, to get good looks on the offensive end. Jayla Scaife, another three. Jayla Scaife, that's her spot. She's done it three times from the top of the key, and Scaife has 14 first-half points. The thing with Jayla and these seniors on Dayton, they know this is it. They have an urgency. When you have seniors, they realize that they're not going to get another chance to do this. You can tell she's really, really playing hard. Yeah, Dayton's been on both sides of the coin. Here's Harbison spinning, little floater around and out. Didn't win the tournament last year. Didn't make the NCAA tournament. Two years ago, didn't win the A-10 tournament. Did as an at-large. Turning around, there's Chandler missing and Harbison the rebound. They were RPI 39. 
This year, right now, Dayton is RPI 49. It doesn't want to leave it up to chance. No, it doesn't. That's exactly what Shauna Green told us, too. And she just wants to win it. Then there's no question marks whether the committee lets you in or not. And even though I do think that they could certainly get an at-large if they don't win it. There's Kent. Clear sailing to the bucket, but just too strong. And the rebound down to Fowler. Someone's got to stop her in transition. Good slide by Martinez. Flyers are shooting 54% here in the first half. Twice as high as St. Louis. And Fowler missing in tight. The rebound by Flowers. You know, Dayton doesn't lead the A-10 in any statistical category. Not one. It won the league. Didn't There's get as many awards as, as we thought either. <laughs> you true. and I were looking at it like, wow, the best team in the league. They didn't get any of the main awards. They got some first team stuff, but... It just shows what a team this is. The one thing, though, is that in conference, they do lead the A-10 in defense. So when the calendar turned, things got turned up a notch, and you're seeing that here this morning. You want to peak at the right time, and that's now. Bradshaw had the miss. The response from Martinez, she missed, and it's rebounded by Dayton. But Julia Chandler was out of bounds. Jayla Scaife, Julianne Viani. She's loving it today. 14 first half points. We got four minutes to go. We're watching Bracket Week, presented by Kubota. Trey Scott leading the way, averaging a double-double. Ken Palm, 41. Are they in will be the question. Well, we'll see. And Nate Pierre-Louis has had a great season with Temple. The Temple men have been a little inconsistent at times, but the American Conference, always always fun to watch, that's for sure. Saw Jay Lascafe coming out of timeout here for Dayton. Good end out of bounds play, although no conversion for Jada Stewart. And St. Louis continues to struggle. Now just 28% from the field. But Jayla Scaife has been the story for the Flyers. 42 in white with 14 first half points in what will be her final A-10 conference tournament. And Dayton has also passed the ball well. They've got nine assists. And yesterday at the half, they had 13. Only ended up with 15 in altogether. So Shauna definitely wants them to keep up the assist rate for the second half, too. Two seconds to shoot and an offensive foul. That's the first on Shaquilla Fowler. Dayton was aggressive, is what Shauna Green told us yesterday. They got to the paint, they got to the bucket, and then A, got good looks, or B, turned around, kicked it out, and that's why Dayton hit 11 threes in the first half yesterday when their previous season high for an entire game was 12. You've got to be able to get it off the bounce so that you can kick it out, absolutely. Draw the defense and then kick, whether it's interiorly or outside. That's what Brooke Flowers was looking to do. Turned to the bucket and gets denied by Julia Chandler. Who now departs. Jordan Wilmoth, a starter, checks back in. St. Louis has to find an answer. What is it? They do. They really need some scoring. I don't care who it is, but they absolutely need Harbison to get aggressive again. She started out the game aggressive, and there we go. There we go. She get heard some you. shots. That's the second three for Kaja Harbison. She had five points in the first two minutes. That's her first bucket since. First team all-conference. Little two-woman game. Whitehead just strong. Rebound by Harbison. She'll push. And the tempo has picked up. St. Louis to the bucket. And Harbison, no foul. Once the call. But it's just a St. Louis ball out of bounds. Kaja Harbison's got to heat up. She's got to take the team on her back and be the leader that she is. And that's what... You got to do in a situation like that. We need a bucket. Knocks it down and then drives the lane. Gets blocked, but the ball remains here with the Billikits. But just being aggressive, that's what I want to see out of her. Waylon with the tap. Able to go into the backcourt and get that. St. Louis wants to slow it down, and you saw Harbison push there. 
it doesn't have that option now. It's too far down. It's got to pick things up. Yeah, because they'll get some open looks pushing in transition, but you've got to get some stops first and rebounds to, to push. Men's three for Kent. Rachel Kent did not score in the first quarter. In fact, she didn't take a shot. Heating up now, couple of threes in the second. And she's got 22 points in her last game and then 19 the game before that. She's been exploding the whole tournament. Flowers hung in there, was just being bullied by Wilmeth. Gets the stuff. Don't look now, it's an 11-point game. And they need to drop some of their new plays for Rachel Kent. We knew that she'd be covered, and that's what Lisa Stone said. Hey, we've got some new plays up our sleeve for her. That's not one of them. It's a charge. First foul on Rachel Kent. Coming up in a couple of minutes, it's at t at the half. We take a look at St. Louis head coach Lisa Stone's coaching style. Jules and I will sit down with the commissioner of the Atlantic 10 as well, Bernadette McGlade. That is all coming up on at t at the half. Dayton 0 for its last five. It has not scored, oddly, for only five shots in four minutes and 21 seconds. That's a long one for Wilmeth. Not the greatest ideal shot for Shauna Green's team and St. Louis with a chance to cut it to single figures again. And they've let St. Louis hang around here and, hang, and St. Louis has responded the last couple possessions. Martinez, great dish. Flowers, that's found money. Brooke Flowers only averages four points a game and Shauna Green is livid. Timeout, Dayton Flyers. Green, not too pleased. A 20-point lead has been cut down to nine. What just happened there for Dayton? Well, this is a team that hangs their hat on defense, and the last three possessions, they've given up easy looks to St. Louis and let them right back in this game. They cut it to under 10 here. Time to get a bucket if you're Dayton. Flyers have not scored in five minutes. An 11-0 St. Louis run, and that will not help things. Only turnover number four. It's actually been a clean game on both ends as far as that goes. But not scoring and then not defending is not a good equation. And that's why you saw Coach Green not happy. She holds them to high standards. I mean, if just, we give up just points in the last couple minutes and this, don't score. in this run. <laughs> Into Flowers again. She's been very good with Smith Traore on the bench. The starting post for St. Louis. Martinez, not a scorer. She's a distributor. Harbison is a point getter. Eight to shoot for the first teamer. Harbison, altered by Wilmeth, wanted a call, didn't get it. Dayton out running. Whitehead to the bucket. And that's just a thing for St. Louis where you've got to go next play. Harbison didn't get the call, stayed on the ground, and St. Louis didn't get back to defend. Nobody did. That was a big problem. They missed shots or turnovers lead to running out for Dayton. Sixth turnover there for St. Louis. Wilmoth is just commanding, demanding the ball. You almost don't want an offensive rebound if you're St. Louis. Just get back. Right. Send everybody back. Scaife. That one's way too left. Yeah, you got to give something up at some point. Yeah, I mean, you see it all the time in the NBA where there's no offensive rebounding for a reason because there's so much crazy running. What's when worse, it, like to not, not get a couple rebounds or give something up easy in transit? Yeah, exactly. You pick your poison, and I'd rather not give up easy shots in transition. He sent one to the glass, but maybe not everybody. Seven to shoot. Good find by Harbison, but Flowers has got to go right up with it. Four to shoot. Kent, two to shoot. Floater, no. Rebounded with six seconds to go in the half. Bradshaw, three seconds. Eyes on the timer. Bradshaw bumped Harbison, and that's a great charge taken by the sophomore from Kentucky. Gives St. Louis a chance with point nine. Lisa Stone does have a timeout to burn where she could advance the ball, but St. Louis will just eat it and head into the locker room down 11. Not the greatest of first halves for St. Louis. Chance to regroup with a spot in the A-10 title on the line. Coming back to Dayton with AT&T at the half next. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home. Of CBS Sports.
Let's take a look at your AT&T game summary as we get set for the second half. Three-point shooting, not quite the 13 Dayton put up yesterday, but almost on track. Right, they're shooting pretty good from, from distance, that's for sure. And uh, I don't think they've taken a ton. I mean, 10 is not a ton, but everything else, you know, the rebounding is around the same. Dayton's just shooting better right now. And that's a key for them. They've got to continue to shoot well. St. Louis needs to shoot better. St. Louis in that first half, you saw just 32%. Limited in their loss to Dayton the last time these teams got together. And in Dayton. Last time these teams were here, St. Louis shot just 24%, including a third quarter without a made field goal. So this next 10 minutes will be pivotal. Right, and one thing that we've heard Shauna Green tell us is that second halves, starting second halves, have sometimes not been great throughout the season a bit. And so you want to start on fire, grab the rhythm for either team here, St. Louis as well. Aaron Whalen with the missed three to open things up for Dayton. And so often, and both coaches have said this to us, it's about executing at this time of year. These teams know each other so well. They just played each other less than a week ago. It's it's about executing. Kendra Wilkin limited with foul trouble in the first half. Kicks out. Rachel Kent, the wild drive. All right, sometimes it just goes in. Rachel Kent hit a couple of threes in the second. She has eight points now. She is so tough. She's got to go hard this half. They need something out of her. Well, right now, Dayton needs something out of anybody because this was at one point a 20-point lead. St. Louis has sliced down with an 11-0 run in the second quarter. Scaife gets fouled. And Scaife had a great first half, Joel, and so if Scaife can continue to be in attack mode, that's going to bode well. I think there's a matchup issue with Scaife. It doesn't seem that anyone on the Billikens can reel her. This is a good job, forcing the switch off and then noticing, hey, I've got Wilkin on me. Let me blow by her. Good job. That's the third foul on Kendra Wilkin. So Lisa Stone pulls the most improved player in the Atlantic 10. Escape now has 15. It's been a problem here today. She's not able to laterally stay with the versatile Dayton Flyers underneath. They're very versatile. 16 for Scaife. What's the way that you counteract that if you're St. Louis to try to prevent Wilkin getting switched on to someone like Yes, Scaife? you have to try to prevent that and... and you know, and get her the ball in the paint, try to utilize her size on the offensive end. Mariama Smith Traore, she's going to have to be the go to now for St. Louis inside, but misses that one short. A game after she didn't miss from the field, she was phenomenal in the quarters against UMass. Scaife dumped it down, got it back, and then missed the shot. It was a wonky possession. St. Louis minus 11. Kent is probing. Here's Maya Clark back in. Remember, she took that hard shot on a screen in the first half. And we've got a whistle off the missed shot and the rebound. That goes on Mariama Smith Traore. That's her first foul here in Dayton. She did not have one yesterday. And Lisa Stone, you could have knocked her over with a feather. It was the biggest deal ever because Smith Traore has been in some foul trouble. Right. Well, that was one thing Lisa Stone was harping on in general. She wants her players to stop fouling so much, especially when they play Dayton. She needs them to stay in the game. And Smith Traore is her best, the best rebounder she said she's ever coached. And she's also a shot blocker, and she just has to be careful to stay in the game. Scaife missed underneath, but an offensive rebound for Dayton here. Aaron Whalen taking Clark inside, stuffed by Flowers. Harbison cleans it up. You know, Brooke Flowers doesn't have the biggest of frames. She's quite slight in there, but don't confuse her power Smith Traore misses the three. She's one of the best shot blockers in the league. She was top two for a while, all season pretty much. Someone's got to stop Scaife. It's Brooke Flowers. She came in to St. Louis at 140 pounds, and she's 6'5", folks. I'm 140 but pounds. She's very athletic, and the sky is simply the limit for her. I mean, she might get pushed off the block a little bit, but she's got a Durant type of body where she gets up and she can get those long blocks. She's also made one three this year. So she can stretch you if need be. How many has she taken? <laughs> uh, one. <laughs> one for one. Okay. <laughs> That's thrown away for Dayton. The Flyers' sixth turnover. They've actually taken very good care of the basketball. Shauna Green's team is on a mission. 
after not winning this tournament last year, last two years, but not making the big dance a season ago. And Shauna Green told us she loves where her team's mind is at right now. And they said all the right things yesterday when talking about, hey, do you feel like you could win the championship? They said, listen, one game at a time. There's Flowers missing on the uh, roll around. Scaife the rebound. And you get the sense that they mean it. They aren't looking ahead. Right. And she did. She doesn't want them to be pressing too much. And that's the thing. You can be pressing too much. And like you can be that. a little too laid back. And they're in a good place, she said, right in between where they need to be. Wanting it, but not wanting it too much that you're not playing well. As we look back here, the penetration, that's what you need to see is some penetration to the basket. Draw some flesh. Bradshaw, like I said, one of the best to do it on this team. Foul was on Rachel Kent. Maya Clark stepped in there to take the charge very well, but Kent fouled before. So Ariane Bradshaw has scored all of her points in this tournament at the free throw line. One yesterday, two today. Transfer out of South Carolina where she played in a national championship game a couple of seasons ago. Teams tend to lay off her a bit over the last uh, couple years and what have you because she's not really a shooter, but she can knock those down and Coach Green wishes she would take 10 more threes a game than she does. She doesn't take enough because she can make them. St. Louis here in the third quarter, just one of five. And a whistle in the paint. That goes on. Speak of the devil. Ariane Bradshaw. That's her second, the first of the quarter. And again, in women's basketball, five fouls is a two-shot bonus. That's the only bonus. Bradshaw checks out. Wilmoth checks out. Whitehead and Shaq Fowler return. Inside, Kaija Harbison. Quick rise. Left it short. Smith Traore had the rebound ripped away. Dayton running. Fowler, good defense by Kent to step in front. Great job getting back in transition. That's what you need to do. Sprint your butts back. You know Lisa Stone was in the locker room at halftime preaching that. There are a few times Dayton beat them down the floor effortlessly. Fowler, Kent sticking with her again. Fowler still got under the bucket, but had her shot grazed. Then Kent has the rebound. And start to take a look at legs too, Joel, in the second half, right? These guys have been playing a lot of minutes the last couple days. Here's Clark. That three's good. Maya Clark's first bucket. And these are two teams that have depth but their main guns play a lot of minutes. Yes, absolutely. And in games like this, it's going to happen in the tournament. Scaife left it short. Rebound blocked again. Flowers with three rejections in the third quarter. Dayton she still is, leads by 10. She is an incredible shot blocker. Just a rim protector. Running out, trying to block one on the perimeter. Chandler got the three off but missed. Flowers yesterday played six minutes, had two blocks. That's pretty efficient. <laughs> you got to know how to shoot the mid-range when you're going in on her. Here's Kent trying to get Rachel Kent open. Clark, good dish to Flowers, and just need to have a little bit stronger hands there. A turnover for Slu. That's number seven. But Whitehead, great hands there, rotating that backside. Lead is 10. Flyers keeping Slu at bay. Rogue Fitness, high praise for Lisa Stone for Brooke Flowers in that timeout. Brooke Flowers don't play like a flower. She's tough in there and tenacious. He has four block shots here in let's see, I think 16 minutes of play. She's been terrific and I love the way that she's just utilizing her length. That's, that's what she has on her side and her defense has been tremendous. You heard Lisa Stone say, I need other players to get the loose ball when she gets the block. So it's important that when she blocks these shots, her, she's got her teammates around her hustling after those 50-50s. She's the rogue pound-for-pound pound performer. Columbus, Ohio is about two hours from here. They should stop by Rogue on the way. You can grab some 45s, throw those <laughs> on when they get home. When Brooke Flowers hits the weight room, she's just a sophomore. What a beast inside to score against. Yeah, but I mean, she's going to be tough. and She's got to continue to just get stronger and... She has such a terrific upside and future. Had the rebound down on the other side of the court. She has played really well today and has eaten into the minutes of Mariama smith Traore, who's usually the go-to post player. Flowers turning inside and is rejected by Chandler. 
And that's where when she gets stronger, she can right. finish in those moments. Yep, her physicality is not quite where it needs to be at this level. But I think any pe person watching or any coach watching her can see that she's got the athleticism. Has the ability to step out. And the fact that she is being drawn up and clearly targeted as a go-to is a good sign for her. Two to shoot. Harbison rising. Just did Gray's iron, and Martinez cannot corral the rebound. This is a 10-point game, and it's, it's very much... Yeah, like, all of the games in this tournament so far have kind of followed the same script, where one team has jumped out to a 10, 15-point lead and then kind of stiff-armed. I mean, Dayton has not hit a shot in the quarter, and it's still up by 10. Yeah, not good. The offense hasn't been good, but St. Louis hasn't capitalized off of that. They have not utilize the fact Dayton hasn't been good on offense. Story of the tournament for all of these teams. Whitehead able to stretch it back out to a 12 point advantage though. Because as tough as it's been to score for Dayton, St. Louis is 2 of 9 in the quarter. Martinez right into Chandler. There's a lot of stuffing going on here on both ends. Thanksgiving's a long way away. People trying to make plays and get into the lane but use the pull up jumper penetrate and pitch out of there there's a lot of good shot blocking on both ends of the floor so know what you're going into and, and use your iq there don't look over under how many blocks in this game man there's got to be at least eight ten ten oh all right i was close <laughs> six for st louis four for dayton and one travel for aaron whalen smith traore checks back in on the interior martinez goes to the bench so Dayton, or excuse me, St. Louis goes big because Kendra Wilkin has checked in as well, playing with those three fouls. So you've got Smith Troyer and you have Wilkin, the starting front court back in. Can St. Louis capitalize with that against Whitehead and Chandler inside for Dayton? Into Wilkin immediately. Most improved player in the league, but again can't finish. Kendra Wilkin has struggled today, one of five from the field. Whalen, quick fire. Around and out. Dayton still now just one of 12 in the third. The door is open. Can St. Louis walk through? No. Clark missed. And that ball is out of bounds. This reminds me of the, the game we did here between these two teams. Except St. Louis was the one Except, that missed. Exactly. It was St. Louis in, a, in a drought Dayton for yesterday. a while. Dayton was one of 17 in the fourth quarter yesterday against Richmond. And that was something Shauna was not happy about because their second half was sloppy. And it leaves again the door open. Kaija Harbison. Ten-point game again, but still it's a ten-point game. It's a stiff arm. Dayton keeping enough of a distance. I'm so impressed with Harbison and how she's added that three-point game to her repertoire. This is something that she did, didn't always do, but she's worked on this in the offseason. And she just comfortably catches it. It's actually a two. It's... It's not a three. It looked like a two from three from my direction, but she has just extended her game as that leader, as that shooter that she was not always as, as adept at. She had to learn how to shoot because people were going under screens last year, and Lisa Stone told us it was kind of like Giannis. Yeah. Everybody would go under the screen and just wait for her to drive. Right, and then you're too easy to cover. you got to keep the defense honest. That's why you need the three-dimensional ability to score. Jayla Scaife, great ability to shoot from three, especially the top of the key. Misses that one, but she had hit four already. Great offensive rebounding, though, by Whitehead. Yeah, that's great hustle. Got a standing ovation from some fans, and a three for Ciccone in front of the bench. Dayton had gone silent, but the Flyers with hustle and a massive bucket. Timeout, Lisa Stone in St. Louis. Uh, you absolutely get rewarded for offensive rebounding. That is just a tremendous effort right there, that 50-50 play. And then it finished with a three-pointer. You're watching Bracket Week presented by Kubota. Good shot, Jenna. Dayton able to stretch the lead back out. 44-31, a lead over St. Louis. 
first of two semis for the A-10 Women's Basketball Tournament today. Starting at 3.30 Eastern, it's the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Tournament semifinals. We find out which teams head to the championship game, Drake and Bradley, Valpo and Missouri State. Jerry Palm right now has Bradley in as a 13 seed. Northern Iowa with the loss. I know. I can't believe it. Them and Loyola Chicago. That has been such a crazy conference all season long. Uh, You know, I think Missouri State could be the team in in that conference, that sneaky team. They haven't been great this year, but they are the most athletic. They're starting to come together. There's going to be some breath holding on UNI's campus. Ball goes out of bounds and to Dayton. Uh, See, they've played really good defense on Kendra Wilkin. They really haven't allowed her to get shots that easily. And they've done a pretty good job without fouling. We're seeing a lot of blocked shots. There's not a lot of fouling. One of six in the game. They've done it before. Wilkin was one of nine when these teams played the first time. Did have 11 points just a week ago when these teams met at the end of the regular season. Whitehead, we've got an offensive foul. That goes on Dayton. This is a big last minute 36 here for St. Louis. They've got to cut this within 10 here. It's a gut check. You want to go into the fourth quarter, 10 or under. So they need to score. We've kind of just sat at 10. The door's been opened. Dayton did not hit a shot for the first six minutes of the quarter, but St. Louis couldn't take advantage. And there's a big bucket for Wilkin. They leave her one-on-one. She converts. Nice shot. A good move. Not not an easy shot. Here's Bradshaw. Scaife quiet in the third and missing short on the three. Wilkin the rebound. Just two points since halftime after Scaife had 14 in the first. Wilkin is fouled from behind. We were saying not a lot of fouls. But well, finally, we always Dayton see gets more one. as we ebb into the fourth quarter. <laughs> Things start to tighten a little bit. Chandler departs. She's replaced by Jenna Giacconi. And it's a baseline out of bounds here. Inside a minute to go. She has to touch the ball is what Lisa Stone says about Wilkin. And doesn't there. Harbison loses it out of bounds. And Dayton takes over. No. Originally it was a Dayton basketball. And then Christy Mosley was overruled. Ooh. It looked as though the ball went off of Dayton there. I thought. You didn't? I thought it was clearly off of Harbison. Bradshaw's got her, got her finger in there near the end, I think. Kent missed short. And Dayton fans would say, ball don't lie. Jaconi just hit that big three before the last timeout. 10 second game clock, shot clock differential here with Dayton up 11. Winner of this gets the winner of VCU and Fordham, a rematch of last year's championship next. Now we've got a foul on the ground. You were saying the fouls start to uptick late. The sense of urgency starts to get there as you mount into the fourth quarter. Shauna Green. None too happy with the foul on Jayla Scaife. That's just her first. And just not a good possession. Scaife didn't get a, get a shot off. They had an opportunity there to finish out and get a shot. Now you said you need to get this to 10. Chance to get it into single figures with a bucket if you're slew. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Harbison into Bradshaw. Lost it. And out of bounds or is there a foul? Been a lot of out of control driving. It's out of bounds. I think it just went out. Yep. So now Dayton with the opportunity. Three seconds is a world of time. Try to find Bradshaw downhill. Good screen by Whitehead and by Wilmoth. Good shot, but offline for Bradshaw. And Dayton's lead through three is 11. It's the end of three in Dayton, Ohio. You're watching Bracket Week. found her rhythm from the start today knocking down from distance really in rhythm her shot looks really smooth she's coming off screens she's doing it underneath the basket but I'm very impressed with her aggressiveness from the beginning and her shot selection she's really let the game come to her Joel 
Shot selection was one of the big things that Jay Lescafe worked on in the offseason. You mentioned going to try out for the Pan Am Games team, Team USA. 35 of the best players in the country, 12 make the team. Scaife did not, but you learn about yourself. Shot selection, creating your own shot, ball handling. The three things she came back with, and it has shown. Yeah, you absolutely learn from the best of the best and what it takes to be at that level. And that's why that experience was so good for her. Foul on Whitehead to start the quarter. As strugglesome as the offense was for Dayton, St. Louis also couldn't hit a shot. Just four of 16. Harbison, too strong. Smith Traore, the rebound, and a big foul. She is a difference maker that we haven't seen yet, and she's got to mix it up. She does. You've got you've to get those players that you've been relying upon throughout the season to really play well at this time of the year. It takes a total team effort. Nice hustle here for the rebound. And then that enables you to get the ball out of bounds and get another opportunity. And that's Smith Traore. Foul was on Ariane Bradshaw. That's her third. Smith Traore had 12 rebounds yesterday. Has not made the same impact in this game. Inbounds into Kendra Wilkin against Wilmoth. Rising off the block. Missed it. Good tap out. But it leads Scaife on the break. Dayton to the bucket. Jayla Scaife. That's just an unlucky hustle play for St. Louis. Trying to keep a play alive. Scaife has 18. She's been all over the floor. I mean, she has been just playing with that excellence. Smith Traore. Bounce? Yes. That's her first bucket. It's so needed. And like we keep harping on, she's one of the X-Factors that hasn't gotten going offensively for St. Louis. And they've needed her to get going. And we said the 12 boards yesterday, only five today. That is thrown to nobody. Turnover number 10 for Dayton. But Jayla Scaife, she just continued to run the floor and do what she does well, and that is score the basketball in a variety of ways. Nice finish here in transition. Off of the stop, off of the defense, into your offense. You know, I take back what we said about that play, too. I thought St. Louis had tapped it out looking for the O-board. That's a heck of a play by Wilmoth. She was the one that swatted it out. Here's Bradshaw on the leak out, and it's transition off of turnovers. Just like that, Dayton's lead, re-ballooning. And that's one thing you cannot afford to do against the Flyers is turn it over. They will make you pay. And that will enable them to do what they like, and that's run. Kent missing the three. She hit six of them yesterday. Done the job on her today. Dayton has limited her, did not take a shot in the first quarter. Eight minutes to decide who goes to the Atlantic 10 championship game. They'll and face again, the Rams next. And again, St. Louis has not gotten past this round. Ever. Ever. Shot clock expires. VCU and Fordham, both Rams, await the winner of this one. And their defensive prowess, just a terrific job executing here off of the, de the defense that steal the turnover, leading to points. They want to make it sloppy and, and do it on that end, and that's where they've hung their hat this entire year. Things Harbison. Got it. When things are up and down, Joel, you know your defense is going to be there. Defense travels, all those cliches about it. The thing about cliches, they're said a lot because they're true. Yeah, it's true. It wins championships. <laughs> Dayton turns it over, though. St. Louis just needs to capitalize. It's been given chances, and Kent can't, but she just got massacred. And hopefully Rachel Kent is okay. Jayla Scaife came over like a bat out of hell. Wow. Yeah, she did. She got her body a little bit. Looks like she fell on her head. She's grabbing her head. Hopefully she's okay. Scaife really, really closed out hard. Which is what you have to do. She didn't mean to do it. It was a basketball play. But they're going to look at it. That is the third foul on Scaife. I thought it was how she fell more than anything here, but great penetration here. She got her arm. It was it was after the ball. She's making a basketball play. Yes, absolutely. I didn't see her hit her head. I think she fell. See, that's where yep. she fell and hit the back of her head on, on the ground. That's what happened. This shouldn't just be a common foul.
Now results in free throws, which will again give St. Louis the chance to cut this to a single-figure Dayton lead. With 7 minutes and 20 seconds to go, and Dayton not scoring right now, that's an eternity. And the coaches are commiserating over it right now, and she fell hard. Shauna doesn't look happy. We haven't heard yet. It, it was a foul either way. Oh, and it's not a technical right. or anything more than a common foul because they're shooting regular free throws. Right, but it, it was a foul anyway, so she was going to the line. Just trying to figure out what got Shauna Green upset. Right. They didn't come over. So Rachel Kent to the free throw line, a 70% shooter. And it's still an 11-point game. We have not had a ton of free throws today. And St. Louis has missed the ones it's taken. One of five. One of six. And these are the games where you can't miss those. They're freebies that you can't get back. Shaquilla Fowler is the reserve point guard. Number four in white, she's in. Scaife working down on the block. And look at her versatility. Just draining threes in the first half and then going down and playing like a true post player in the second. She's been a monster. She's been doing exactly what she's been capable of throughout her career. Like I said, has struggled with injuries, but she feels healthy. Kick to Harbison, a three to answer. You know, St. Louis has been able to trade punches, but it's been trading. Trading and still lagging behind the 10 points. They can't get past the 10-point barrier, but nice shot by Harbison. Steal by Smith Traore. Took it right away from Scaife. This, this is, is a big spot. Harbison, great dump. Wilkin, and Scaife is there. Wow, what a terrific offensive play, but a better defensive play. And Jayla Scaife has come to play like a senior should be with urgency, with the post up on the block where after she had knocked down some threes and then the hustle on the other end, and she gets a clean look here. What hustle. Jayla Scaife is playing like Cousin Bonzi here on Championship Weekend. Bananas, absolute bananas. Where's number 42? Bonzi Wells, her cousin, wore 42. Her father wore 42. Five seconds. Harbison, no whistle. Smith Traore ran right into Waylon and a foul. Now, I thought Harbison got hit on the arm there. Smith Traore with her second. This thing has gotten very physical. That was one thing we knew. Handling Dayton's physicality was a key for St. Louis. Inside six minutes to go. That's a blocked three. Harbison, good closeout on the much taller Aaron Whalen. Little press there by Bradshaw. Three up top, Stewart way short, Smith Traore right place, right time, and a bucket. That's her second, the offensive rebounding machine. Timeout, St. Louis hanging around down eight. Two rebounds, however, they're they're not really, I don't think handling the physicality bad, but I think right now Dayton is, is starting to make it tough, and then don't make it a track meet. It held Dayton to 50 points at this point. For Dayton to defense and win the boards, they're doing that, and they are playing well right now. They went on that fast start, but I would say they haven't been great in the second half. No, the 19-2 run is the difference. They went on the run, and that's held, and that has been the story of every game in this tournament. We haven't had a lot of back and forth. We've had one team take a lead and then stiff arm throughout our time here in Dayton. The defense has been good for Dayton. I mean, they've held St. Louis down here. And St. Louis has held Dayton down. Question is, can it reverse what you just said? Harbison will get the first crack. Listen, they cut this thing to eight points. Plenty of time. 
you don't get here if you're not capable pulling out wins. These two teams are tough. Five seconds to shoot for Smith Traore. Here's Harbison off the pick and roll. Into the trees, got rejected, and a shot clock violation. 30 seconds of phenomenal Dayton Flyer defense. It's been stifling. It really has been. And St. Louis cannot get a really good look. And Dayton's got their heads on a swivel. They're communicating. And Shauna Green has really coached them up that their, that their defense can't slip. There is no slippage there. The mantra for Dayton is finishing. Did not win the A-10 tournament last year and then did not get an at-large to the NCAA tournament. So missed for just the second time in a decade. Lost a lot of close games. And Shauna Green said, we have to finish. And it's been a focus. And you're seeing it right now. The expectations of this program are very high. They just expect to win. Offensive rebound. Big bucket, Whalen. Ten-point lead again for the Flyers. Did not shoot well in the fourth quarter yesterday. Won it with defense. Winning it with defense and then just a couple very key shots here today. Off of 50-50s and rebounds. You're getting the extra possessions. Smith Traore rolls off the iron. Flowers, other side, got it. What a shot. A little fadeaway and finish from Flowers. Here's the water bug. Fowler underneath. Sidestep, a three for Scape. She is fouled. Oh, boy. On the three-point line, it looks like. Rachel Kent, the freshman. That's her third. And you certainly want to don't want to send Scape to the foul line off of a three ball. Nice little step back here. She's been too good today. 70% shooter, misses the first. You talked about 50-50 balls. Waylon just hit that last one, but what was the other big shot for Dayton? When St. Louis made a charge in the third quarter, it was the Jaconi three, which came after Whitehead dove into the scorer's table to save a loose ball. There's nothing like a dagger three, Joel. I mean, I'm a huge fan. Obviously, I, I shot them as a player, <laughs> but they're, they're daggers, and they stepped up and knocked them down in really important moments. And that shows the veteran leadership and experience of the Flyers. 22 out of the veteran Jayla Scaife, two of three at the line. Flowers out, Wilkin is back in. Not to mention, by the way, they're at home. <laughs> that helps, the comfort of this place. Dayton is 12-2 and two in this building. Just so happens to be the host site of the conference tournament this year. Wilkin, great spin move, able to finish inside, schooling Julia Chandler on what's been a tough day for Kendra Wilkin, just 2 of 10 from the floor. But she's continued to be aggressive, and I like that move. She turned the right way. Eight-point game. Time is waning, though. And we have to consider, you've got to get stops here. You can't foul just yet. I don't think it's, I think it's too early. Six to shoot. Scaife. Oh, Jayla Scaife! She wants to dance. Ain't no one going to deny her. And they need a timeout. That's a good timeout. Dayton's lead is 11. The senior has 24. St. Lewis has tried. Dayton has denied. The lead is back up to 11 for the Flyers. Jayla Scaife Dagger. She's been unstoppable, folks. And she just wants it. Playing with a sense of senior urgency. 49th in the net, 48th in the RPI. Dayton's trying to leave no doubt, though. Win this tournament, you're in, regardless of what that resume says. They did schedule tough in the non-conference. And it, it's really paid off. It has, and that's something that Shauna Green knew would happen, is the fact that you're playing a South Carolina. Yeah, you're getting beat pretty bad in that, but when they, you hit conference play, they just went on a crazy run. They were 15-0 and before their first loss of the conference. They were playing bigger, faster players, and it's helped. Dayton has lost eight games this year. Seven of those teams played in the NCAA tournament last season. Yeah, their RPI is pretty good. They've, they've scheduled tough. Five to shoot. Four to shoot. Chandler wildly off to the right. 
That would have been the go-home shot. Harbison right around nice. Chandler. Trying to keep her team alive. 17 for the first teamer, Kaja Harbison. Back within single figures. But this is about where we've stayed. Defense clearly has fueled everything on the offensive end. Well, we were here when these teams played in Dayton last time. And Jayla Scaife was coming off an injury, if you remember. She had missed three games. She was struggling. Shauna Green even said she felt bad because she had worked so hard to have a great senior season. And it wasn't coming to fruition the way that Jayla had wanted. And she knew how good she was. She's this, this good. I think the narrative has changed. Jayla Scaife She's has healthy. taken the bull by the <laughs> horns right to the rim. That's too strong. But when I look at who's on the floor, that's what I see. I see a star taking over the game. She's a pro. There's a block. Wilmoth taking it away from Wilkin. Stays with St. Louis. Kent missed. And it's rebounded by Whitehead. Jayla Scaife. And they're not going to foul, I guess. They're going to have to start to consider it. Or they kill another 20 seconds here on the clock, I guess. Here's Fowler. Full head of steam and a whistle. Now, you and I have also done a game this year in the A-10 where we have seen a nine-point lead evaporate in quite literally 14 seconds. Ah, that VCU game. <laughs> VCU, Duquesne, what and Richmond. What a game that was. So. I had never seen anything like it in the regular season. I mean, ever. Men's, women's. It was so fast. We blinked. And they nearly won the game. St. Louis is still going to play this out. Harbison goes under on Fowler. Fowler lost it, but it's last touched by Blue. Surprise you they're playing it out at this point? I think they would, I, I would have thought they would be fouling at this point, but it looks like. Or is it almost a resigned to the fact they're that. They're resigning to the fact they're going to lose here. Scaife, step back. Jayla Scaife, well short. Rebounded by Martinez. St. Louis got to go in its quest to win to keep Dayton from beating the same team three times. That's the old cliche. Looks like Dayton just might be the better team this year. Yeah, they and are. And there's nothing wrong with that. St. Louis has had a great season. And they had a foul to give there. Jayla Scaife. That is four. Drew up a three here or something for Kendra Wilkin inside to get to the 50 mark. You've got the ability to just get a good shot. Then you got to foul immediately and hope that Dayton misses some free throws. And Dayton's a good free throw shooting team. That is one thing we could say. They're pretty fundamentally sound every year. You've got to get it in first. Kent off a three quick trigger. Oh, all right. Do you get extra points for that? Uh, it's been stuck. Hey, can anybody get up there? <laughs> Time Joel, to test some I know birds. that you, you got ups. <laughs> you know what? I give props to Jordan Wilmoth for trying, though. We'll give her the mop. Scape's coming in the game. She, she might want to try. You know, I'd say that's hard to do, but it happens too often. It does. It happens all the time. I mean, it's kind of like, well... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, the, if you remember the Toledo Notre Dame men's game back in the non conference, where it was, it was like a game winner that got wedged up there. That's, closing seconds. It's, it's crazy, but yeah, it does happen. I believe they're checking clock. With 31.2 currently showing. You know, you feel for St. Louis. Thing we said off the top. Tired of being the bridesmaid, St. Louis yep. will now be 0-4 in A-10 semifinal appearances all in the last five years. And that's frustrating, and it's got to be the most frustrating for Lisa Stone. You know, she's been having to watch that each year, and they're looking at the clock here. 32.3, they added about a second. But they have advanced to the semifinal four of the last five years, so they've gotten here, but it's just... It's always a little too little too late as we look at this again the shot clock game clock and the clock kept running here so it should have stopped so we're going to add a little time on here 
we're all human. Clock operators got hand-eye coordination. You mean there's a human element still? We don't just... My dad was the clock operator for the <laughs> longest time back home in New Jersey. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm sure he's got some... They have to do something in your retirement. Clock stories. <laughs> some clock stories. Nine-point lead with 32.3 left for Dayton. Into Whalen and Harbison with the reach in. So now Dayton has to ice this at the free throw line. That's three on Harbison. Actually, I spoke too soon. They still have fouls to. Yeah, there haven't been a lot of fouls in this game. There, there, she does get on the line. No, here. that's the bonus. The only person that set up for free throws there was the official, Christy Mosley. So now we're square for free throws the rest of the way. And Jaconi is short. 60% free throw shooter. She is the one to foul. Well, they, did you notice they didn't foul immediately? They waited till she got the ball. And then they hacked her. Which is odd. Hits the second. Because Jaconi is such a great three-point shooter. I know. It doesn't always translate into free throws, which is what's sometimes a little mind-boggling but it's the truth it's it's a lot about toughness and just repetition too getting there a lot martinez finding kent shot clock off inside 30 seconds easy bucket for rachel kent who will be around for a very long time in this league and a timeout taken by shauna green Dayton was trapped in the corner, so bailing out what could have been a turnover there with 20 seconds to go. Dayton in that championship. The Missouri Valley, what happens in that league if Missouri State gets knocked off, although that's probably a multi-bid league. Central Michigan has lost its last two games. Which is surprising to so me. So if they get bounced, that's, yeah, that makes the MAC a two-bid league. It's possible. We'll see what happens with all the, the, the leagues that send one or two at times. It's really up in the air right now. All the tournaments have not been played just yet, and the tickets have not all been punched. St. Louis will not be a bid stealer here in Dayton because the Dayton Flyers at home are one step closer on their road to redemption. The Flyers at home will play for the Atlantic 10 Championship a day from now. Fifty-eight fifty is your final. It'll be one versus either the number two seed or the defending champion. Buckle up, grab your popcorn. For Julianne Viani and our entire crew, I'm Joel Godet. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Four sides of the story of one shining moment. Next.